All right, everyone. Welcome to Banter Blitz with Pascal Charbonneau. Uh, on this big day, our sixth uh, Chess 24 birthday. Um, I don't know if it's a coincidence that it's on the 24th, by the way. Has anyone, uh, has anyone uh, figured this out yet? I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Please let me know if my sound is working because I, I've, been, uh, I've been hosting the streams for, for a lot of the guests today. And I just want to make sure that, that you can hear me. Uh, and then we will get started with some games. Um, we have a, a special birthday code today that allows you to get a free hoodie if you sign up for pre premium membership. You don't need to be a premium member to play me, uh, but you, uh, I'm sorry, you do need to be a premium member to play me, but you don't need to be a premium member to watch this stream or follow or participate in the chat. Um, I am um, I'm going to be in the... Um, in the Twitch chat as well as in, of course, the Chess24 chat. Um, so you can you can hit me up in uh, either of those. And uh, and uh, yeah, so let me actually make sure. I just, I'm just opening the the. Sorry, I'm a little bit uh, a little bit frantic here this this uh, this evening since I was uh, since I was hosting and I haven't uh, you know I haven't done this too too much yet. So this is a, a little bit new for me. So bear with me, but hopefully. Uh, I'm actually just going to pop this one out, pop this window out, all right, so I think I am all set to go here, so good luck to everyone, let's have fun, and uh, yeah, hopefully some people beat me today, by the way, if, there's, if anyone ever wants to do anything a little bit different, like for example, if someone wants to, uh, if someone wants to, um, I don't know, for example, let's see, I, I want to actually, I had some really early challenges here from uh, from a couple of people, so I want to accept them. Uh, Serge, or Sergei, you're on my list. Uh, I'm going to accept probably in one or two games. I'm going to start here with uh, NUM, or N-H-U-M, and let me switch my scene now to um, the one where you can actually see the board. All right, here we go. Uh, my opponent here, Num American 2393. By the way, if you guys want to like tell me what first move to play or anything like that, all right. Someone says Karo Khan. All right. Well, if he plays e4, uh, I will play c6. So, but so far he's not playing. I'm gonna give him another five seconds and then we're gonna move on. I mean, if you think the Karo Khan is boring, uh, Stulu. Just uh, suggest something that you think is more interesting. I mean, I, you know, you can play, you can tell me to play A6 or B5 or something like that. You know, I don't want to make any of the moves that, like, just kind of give up the game. But, um, all right, so he was not available. All right, then we'll start with Serge. Sergei Rachmaninov, a very uh, high-rated player, 2750. All right, I get, looks like I'm getting the white pieces here. Um, all right, e4 or d4? c4. Okay, Mr. Fluff, Mr. Fluffington says c4, so we'll play c4. Here we go. I am listening to your your recommendations. All right, uh, what do I do after c5? Any ideas? I'm I'm kidding. I, I guess I have to take it over. I have to take it over at some point. So here we go. Someone says, joue ta meilleure, ligne, uh, ta meilleure ligne théorique, which means play your best theoretical line. Well, I don't really have a best theoretical line right now, so I'm just going to try, just gonna try to, to, to survive. Um, by the way, we just released today. I'm going to play E3. Uh, I actually think these positions are more interesting. More inter they end up being more interesting than they look, than they look at first glance. Uh, I can play D4 here. This kind of transposes to the kind of positions that I do like to play. So I like to play isolated queen pawns. I've... I always like to play them. This can happen. Actually, Magnus was talking about this in his video uh, on the Stonewall, which I, I listened to the introduction. But this just came out today, available for free to premier members. Uh, it's just called The Stonewall. Um, I'll actually play a quick little video at some point in this uh, hour and a half when you guys are a little tired of hearing my voice. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he talks about how this very position, actually, um, this very position actually is a position that can come from a Karakhan move order or from a move order like this one. So here Serge uh, is playing the bishop g4 line, which is a, um, 
this is sort of an old variation. You know, one of the one of them leads to an end game. Black can also play for for a different position. I I forget. I don't know that I actually love this this line anymore. It's kind of kind of drawish, but uh, it is what it is. We'll see if Surge uh, knows his theory very well or not. So let's see. Again, this is an old line. I played this when I was like 10 years old, um, and I haven't played it since. But from what I recall, even back then, it was sort of, well, th there was a time where people thought white could get a slight edge. Um, I'm not going to tell him the right move because he might be listening to me. And so I am going to just wait until he plays to tell him the right move. Um, I'm not actually being that serious. It doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. Most of the logical moves are actually okay here. Um, but anyway, one of the main lines leads to an end game that used to be considered to be a little bit better for for white, but I think now you know with computer analysis and and very deep preparation, um, it just kind of ends up being equal. All right, so knight uh, knight to b6 is actually the more um, complicated way to play this, um, and uh, so I played bishop e3. I think there's also the move um, you can also play d5 instead. Uh, and now I think, uh, do I castle or do I play? I think I ca I think I castle because I think the king, the king is better on c1 than on g1 because uh, I'll probably play king b1. And at some point, you know, of course, I'll want to probably play d5 and open things up. Um, so we'll see. Um, I don't remember any of the theory, so you know I'm sure someone in the chat probably knows more than I know. Um, if I remember correctly, you know black black equalizes in these positions, but it's not so easy. Um, and certainly, you know I have ways to play it. I'm not going to play d5 right away because it simplifies things a little bit too quickly. Um, all right, so he makes this move, which makes sense. I think I'll start probably start with king b1. The king really is, uh, has no business staying on c1 for very long. And now the question is, do I want to play d5 here, or do I want to wait and p make a move either with my... My bishop doesn't really have... My f1 bishop doesn't really have any clever squares to go to. Um, and so, so what do I do? So do I want to play d5? Takes, 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 takes. He moves his bishop away. I don't love that there my bishop is still um, still under attack. I wonder if I can just play. So if I, the problem is that at some point he's going to play knight a5, and then I won't get to play d5. So maybe I do have to play d5. We'll play, we'll play d5 and see what happens here. All right, so I take. I'm not absolutely in love with what I did just because I feel like there's a chance it could get a little bit drawish here. Um, so now do I want to play with or without queens? Maybe I play, maybe I start with bishop c4. I don't think that he's got a really good queen move here. Um, of course he can trade. All right, so he goes queen f6. That's actually probably a good move. Maybe I should have just traded myself. Um, so now he's threatening the pawn on b2, so I have to do something about that. I'll probably play bishop c1. That looks like the most sensible move, but I have to be a little bit careful now. Of course, he can play rook d8. I'll play queen e4. His position looks okay to me, but maybe not, maybe not more than okay. Um, I'm going to try to speed it up. Okay, so he's he's threatening uh, to move his bishop away, of course. So I have to do something about that. I, I, I was thinking I'll just play queen g4. I think that looks like the most natural. Um, it's, a, it's sort of an interesting position. Um, his rook on e8 is not ideally placed, but I guess it did serve a purpose. And at some point I may want to play f4, but he's just got bishop d4, so it's not. it's really not really just not the easiest position for me to, to try to claim an advantage. Um, now knight d4, what if I play, 
I think now I'll play f4 because it, I'd like to force his bishop off of his diagonal. Um, and now I kind of like the idea of playing bishop d2. So I'm trying to come to c3 in most scenarios. In some cases, I even have maybe the idea to go to bishop b4 and try to trap his rook. Um, so now, now I think I can play bishop c3, and if he takes on f4, I have bishop takes e6. Okay, so he plays queen g6. That's a decent move, but at least, well, still a complicated position. I was thinking, oh, actually, ah, I should have played bishop b4 there. I sort of missed a chance to, to do that. Maybe I can still do it. Actually, it looks quite okay here, too. Um, trying to take his rook over there. Um, probably would have been better to do it one move earlier. All right, so now this this move actually holds his um, holds his material. Unfortunately, I can take on e6, but that doesn't really do all that much. So I'll play here. Um, it might turn out to be a drawish endgame again. I don't know. So this move. Now I think I'll play bishop a. Well, actually, I'll play bishop c3. Threaten bishop e6. Uh, it's a little bit annoying, and I may be able to take the a7 pawn. Also, so now he lets me play bishop e6, and now I think I just tricked him because I have rook takes g7 check. And so I'm, now I'm, I should definitely be winning. Um, I still have to kind of find the right uh, discovered check. How do I do this? It's not actually, it's not easy to win like a whole piece here. Um, so I think... I guess I'll just play for some kind of rook endgame. I can give him a check first just to win a little time. So which pawn to take? I think I'll take the a7 pawn. Um, okay, so he goes that way. So I thought he was going to play bishop d4 here. Um, so he lets me take a third pawn. Okay, and now he goes there. Well, now I'm, I'm going to be up. I'm going to be up at least... Um, my pawns are all going to be sort of broken apart, but I'm going to be up three of them, so hopefully that should be enough to win. Um, actually, it's definitely enough to win because my uh, my uh, my his king is actually not not in a very good spot. So now I can just bring my king up. Uh, that should, uh, of course, be winning. I don't know that I'm playing this in the best of ways, to be honest, um, but. Actually, I'm definitely not playing this in the best of ways, but hopefully it will be maybe good enough to win. So now I can maybe cut his king. I think I'm winning here. Um, yeah, so I'm finally winning, but has not been easy. Oh boy, terrible technique with my rook here. So I'm actually just well. I had to uh, I had to take it down to the down to the limit here. Tough first game. Oh my goodness! If I play all games like this, I'm not going to last an hour and a half. It's going to be a 30 minute stream. Uh, but anyway, tough game. Uh, Sergey, uh, thank you very much. All right, I got to get somebody just a little bit more um, a little bit more manageable here. So I'm going to play. Um, let's see. I have a. Tari 007, a five-minute game. This is another five-minute game. I'll actually start probably playing mostly three-minute games um, after this one because the five-minute games do take a little while. All right, so good game, uh, good game, Sergey. Always, always stuff. Yeah, uh, Sergey is, is saying he spoiled by he spoiled an interesting position by letting me play bishop takes e6. Um, <coughs> that is certainly true. I think you know it was close to it was it was definitely drawish like most most of the games. So the question is just uh, kind of what was the best way for you to to equalize. But I think it was close to equality. All right, here we go. By the way, nobody told me what opening to play, so I just played an Imzo Indian. I'm actually getting almost the same position. That well, no, you know what? If I played C D D four, it would have been literally almost the same position as the last game. I did not want that, so I'm just going to play um, a different line, a different line to uh, 
to keep it a little more uh, interesting. All right, so um, I think I'll take on c3. I forget and play b6. Um, of course, the Nimzo Indian is a very rich opening. Um, so now, in some cases, I want to play e6 to e5. Okay, so this bishop a3 doesn't bother me too much. I actually think the bishop, that's not really the best square for the bishop. It doesn't do all that much. Um, I think I can play e5 here because that kind of, especially with a bishop on a3, um, I feel like, you know, that that's a, it's likely to be a good move. I'm kind of opening up things on the king side a little bit. Of course, this is a, this is a very standard, uh, very standard plan. Normally, you know, white has to take on e5, trade a few pieces. So this move, this move looks suspect. Um, the move bishop c4 looks a little bit suspect. So now, first thing I can do is I can take an f3, um, but I don't know that it's incredibly convincing. So he's wait because he's wasted. He's definitely wasted some time. Um, if I play knight g4, he can play d5. So that's not that's not too incredible. Um, but I don't like the moves that kind of give a point to his bishop being where it is. So I'm trying to figure out what the right way. I mean, e5 is. I'm sorry, e4 is tempting. Also, just kind of since he's wasted some time. That's what I'll do. I think there might be other better moves here. And I'll play h5. Idea sometimes to play knight to. Um, Knight to g4. Okay, so he goes. He goes here. Um, so what do I play now? I guess I'll play rook d8. Um, I might at some point want to sort of recycle this knight around. But the problem is, if I move my knight, then he takes on c5 in some cases. Although maybe that's not maybe that's not something I'm too worried about. So I'm just going to try to transfer my knight to to nicer squares here. Um, all right, so he wants to trade bishop. I, I wasn't too, uh, I didn't really mind this trade of bishops, but I do have to be careful that his position is not getting too active. Um, so I still think, I guess I'll just, I'll sacrifice a pawn here. I mean, there's there's a there's a lot of ways to play these positions, and it's always hard, especially in a blitz game, to decide. My idea now is that if he takes on b7 and takes on c5, I can play knight e5 to d3. All right, so he makes this move. He's playing actually quite well in this game, I must say. Um, I don't love my rook on d8 anymore with this pawn on c5, so I'm just gonna go back. Uh, but his position looks fine. I mean, I think it's probably about equal. Um, you know, his bishop is not especially good, but his, uh, but it's still a bishop. And, uh, yeah, he's holding, he's been holding everything together quite well. Uh, maybe here I can try, I like the idea of just kind of at least mixing things up, play knight d5, get the position a little complicated. Now on most moves I want to take on d4 and then play knight c3. Um, so he's got to find a way to deal with that. And I don't know, it's, it's, I mean, it's not impossible that his last move was a mistake. I, I don't know yet, because now here, you know, knight c3 is coming. Um, and so I think, I think I'm going to win an exchange. That doesn't mean it, the position is going to be completely winning. He may be able to get the b-pawn or something uh, and get a little bit of uh, of counterplay, but we'll see. But certainly I'm, I'm sort of out of... Uh, I'm definitely out of trouble. Uh, the question is just whether I'm I'm like winning or, or I still have a lot of work to do. I sh I, I like my chances because it's my rook is going to be very active there. All right, so he takes on h5. Um, that's another pawn that was possible for him to take. I like the idea of playing queen a6, get my queen out of this b b file pin, um, and then also I have interesting squares like so I'm attacking the bishop of course, and then. Um, I want to play something like queen d3, which I'll probably play here, even though his bishop uh, is defending quite well, uh, because the queen is sort of invading in a hopefully a good way. Um, I may want to play something like rook c2, um, 
This queen on h5 looks pretty, but I, it doesn't really seem to cause cause a lot of trouble for now. Um, all right, so he moves. Now, rook f1, I'm happy to see just because it, it seems a little passive. I mean, maybe he has ideas of dreams of playing his f pawn at some point, but that looks more like. Um, and now on knight b1, I think after rook b2, um, I'm attacked. This is just a simple double attack, uh, but I don't think he's got a good response to it here. So I think I think maybe this one is going my way. Um, got some question here in the uh, in the Twitch chat. So first of all, why are there so many grandmasters? Well, I think the reason there's a lot of grandmasters these days um, is that um, you know there's access to information that there wasn't when I I became a grandmaster already many many years ago, like 13, 14 years ago. And um, not not as long ago as the uh, legend Gatsakemsky, but it was a while ago. Uh, and you know we had to work with like a DOS-based database. DOS was an old operating system where you had to you know type type things, and you were using uh, um, you know a, basically a black and white screen, like not not a Windows type uh, or, uh, operating system. So anyway, it used to be a lot harder to get good at chess than it is today. Just you know now you can. You can watch the Magnus video and learn to play the Stonewall, maybe better better than I have ever learned to play it. So, you know, access to information is a huge difference. Um, other questions. Um, oh, the right move I was waiting to tell him in the pen of, by the way, was just to play uh, e6 instead of knight b6. That's the line where you take on b7 and it gets into an endgame. Um, but that, you know, it's not that that's not what happened actually. The, and the move, the line that he played was totally fine. I guess my opponent here is, is, uh, has decided to uh, wait it out. So we'll wait it out. We'll keep talking. We'll keep talking. All right. So he finally makes a move. Queen b5. I guess I'll take on b1 because um, then I can sometimes take the bishop also, which looks good. All right. So now I'm I'm up a lot of material. Um, I'll play rook d8 so that I can try to trade queens on d6. Actually, I was hanging up hanging my pawn there, but I guess I would have uh, survived that. All right, thank you, uh, Tari. Good game. Uh, all right, so I said I'm going to start playing some five minute uh, some three minute games. So here's the first one that I see here from Chess Beast Austria. Again, if you're if you're in the chat. Um, if you're in the chat, you know, you can tell me what move to play. The Magnet is in the chat. That's cool. The Magnet is my old friend, uh, LaFong, who is who has got the, the time slot right after me. LaFong and I probably met when we were, when I was five or maybe six, and he was six or maybe seven. We're one year apart. Um, he's a, he's a really good, uh, he's a really good uh, blitz player. He's a really good coach. Um, and uh, he knows like the dragon. That's why he's got his own discount code of Bishop H6, which is a uh, you know an old uh, an old uh, dragon move. All right. So now my opponent played uh, played A5. I'm I'm sort of happy to say A5. I'm I'm not playing the right move order for White here, by the way. But I'm just kind of playing around. Um, but I don't know what I'm doing actually. Like this 91 C2 plan is really more of a plan against uh, when they play E5. Um, so I'm just getting. A, I was talking and not thinking, um, but here my opponent unfortunately hung his knight, and so that is going to help me um, help me in this game <laughs> make up for my. Uh, I'm talking. I'm talking too much. Not really playing proper opening moves here. Um, as Gata Kamsky taught me in the previous in the previous a uh, uh, banter, uh, I once I win material, I'm happy to trade. Um, so I'm just going to play solidly. I'm going to try to play for B4 which should uh, open up some lines and, um, and trade pieces. Um, three minute games, I have to play a little bit faster than in the five minute games, but I'm going to try to keep uh, talking just as much. I'm not, I'm not going to Someone is doing some some speculation in the chat about uh, the reasons why kids watch Lafong. I'm not gonna.
get into these uh, these speculations. All right, so his knight uh, on g4, I'm just going to chase him away. Um, if he goes to h6, maybe I'll even play queen c1 to to bring him to force him to f5. I don't love the queen being against the bishop. There's no threat, but I, it's always a chance that you fall for for some kind of uh, some kind of cheapo. So I don't want to have that happen. All right, so. Knight to f5. I guess I'll play knight d5. Get into uh, a nice square here. Um, what else? I really enjoyed. Uh, I really enjoyed all of the. Uh, so uh, Burns 420 actually. Um, by the way, a funny a funny name. Um, Lafong is actually in the Twitch uh, chat, not the uh, not the Chess 24 chat. And yes, Lafong is older than me. You know, he he does not age. He looks the same as he did when he was seven years old. Um, that is just that is just Lafong. He's lucky. All right, I'll attack his queen. Um, he can play f6. And I was just hoping that that's a little bit of a weakness. I guess, I don't know if I'll trade bishops. I guess I'll trade bishops. Um, sometimes in these winning positions, you just have to kind of make moves and, and hopefully your position uh, gets better as it goes. Um, and I've just been taking a little bit, I've just been taking too long. So I'm just going to start playing a little bit faster. Uh, now my idea is to play queen a7, take on b6. Um, I also might double on the a file so I can play... Um, Queen a8, if he plays rook f7, for example. Or I could play queen a6, also a, a reasonable uh, reasonable move. Um, eventually, you know, when you're up a piece, it should, uh, it should show itself. And things just start to collapse. I can take on b6. Now, if he doesn't take my queen, I'll take on c5. And I think more stuff is hopefully going to fall. All right, so this is going to be a good game. Uh, he can take on h3, then I can play either c6 or I could uh, take on d6. All right, Lafong is in all of the chats now, so nobody can complain. Everyone can just be very happy. All right, I'm going to play. So next, sorry, I keep scrolling here. I shouldn't scroll. Um, all right, who do we have here? Uh, we have here a name that I can't pronounce, so I'm going to accept it. Zichuk. I'm going to try to say it. Zichuk Rachina. There, I said it. Perfect. I did learn some Russian. This is not. A, this doesn't actually sound Russian, I think, but it's some kind of Slavic. Uh, I don't know what it means. Hopefully, nothing, nothing offensive to anyone. Um, but yeah, I did learn Russian when I was in college, but I have not practiced uh, nearly as much in recent years, so I'm losing it a little bit. Um, I still try to pronounce things for fun sometimes. Um, all right, so I played a6 here, which is not doesn't turn out to be the most useful in this exact setup. Although once I play e5, it is a useful move, so um, I'm kind of happy to have it anyway. Um, I'll try to make moves that make sense here. This is sort of a standard uh, ready. I like putting the rook on c8, just especially with the queen on on uh, on c2. I'll play h6 because sometimes there's some knight h4 ideas, you know, h3 and stuff like that. All right, so he goes there. Play queen e7 again, trying to make reasonable moves without taking too long. Um, at some point, you know, I want to play possibly e4. It's it's always hard to know which pawn breaks are gonna be effective. Uh, but on e4, I think I'll just keep the center closed. Um, everything is possible, and then I may be able to just play c5. Uh, and we have sort of a 
All right, what did he play? He played queen a1. I didn't even see it happen. Um, I think c5 makes sense. Try to lock in this bishop. And then I got to kind of re, um, like reorganize, decide what I want to play for. Um, but I think, I think I may want to bring my knight from d7 to c6. Also give space to my bishop. Um, we have a very closed position here, so it could be that things take a while to get too exciting. Um, at some point, I'll consider probably playing g6. Um, and so he can he can try to prepare um, f4, but it's not so easy for him to get it in a advantageous way. And I'll, so now I'm I'm preparing to play b5, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, and I don't know that he's best positioned to meet it. And then I may just double the rooks on the b file. Um, I could play rook b6 or rook b7, uh, but I'll play rook b6. Maybe rook b7 was better actually because there's knight c4 sometimes. Yeah, that was not rook b6 is not the right way to do it, but you know. Lafong already did his hair. That's a good sign. You guys are going to be in trouble. His hair is ready. That means he is ready. So just be be prepared for a tough a tough challenge here against him. Um, he is like Samson, you know, the um, the legend of Samson. All right. So now I think his pawn is too weak on b3. It's not falling yet, though. He can play. Yeah, he can play there. Um, I was going to play bishop e6. I think that makes a lot of sense. I might want to play uh, queen b7. It's going to be really hard for him to hold on to that pawn eventually. But even even positionally, you know, if he had a knight on d3 here, his position would be quite reasonable. But without a knight on d3, this position kind of kind of isn't good. Um, with a knight on d3, it's a different story. Um, so now I think I can just take this pawn. I'm assuming I can. Um, I have enough. I think I can still count the pieces. Uh, in a very basic way. So I've won a pawn and it's hard. The structure is actually a bigger problem than even the pawn. So, um, all right. So now I have my choice of second pawn. I'll take the I'll take the C pawn um, because um, because that's the one I want. No, I mean because it's it's just a. Uh, a, um, it gives me two pass pawns, which is really nice. Um, so now, I guess I'll just try to trade queens. He's, of course, not going to, but that frees up frees up the c pawn to go forward. Um, so this this should just be a pretty trivial position to win here. Uh, he doesn't have any rook b1 tricks, so I should be able to just push. And I will push again. And. I think now I can play d3, win a piece. I'm trying to see if there's any kind of, there might be something ends up here which I don't love. So maybe I'll just play some other move. Since there's not really any threat, I'll play bishop to b3 first. I'm just trying to avoid any kind of tricks. I don't think there was really anything, but just in case. Um, okay, so now potentially I could take on e4. Looks like that's got to be good. Uh, my knight might want to come to d2 and then f3. Um, so yeah, I mean he can he can at some point take on he could take on um, on d4, but I'm just going to be up a lot of material. Um, I'm trying to see if maybe knight d2 is more accurate here, or maybe even well I'll just play bishop b5. I don't know why I'm somehow I'm like creating a decision out of something that shouldn't be really be a decision. You know that feeling, maybe. Um, now I can take here and F1 will hang. All right, so I should win. He takes here. And finally, I get to trade queens with queen b2. Good game. Um, Zichuk. And um, yeah, so here we go. We're going to... I'll play one more game and then I'll show you a video and then we'll we'll get back to it. Uh, I'm gonna play here 2,600 opponent. Uh, actually, no, he challenged me as white. I don't like when people do that. So then I'm gonna play chess cadet who challenges me. Um, I think I've played against them before. Another quite high rated opponent. So here we go. Where's chess cadet from Germany? All right.
Is he here? Yes, he is. All right. Um, all right. I'll play. I'll play G6. I will play um, some kind of modern. Okay. So he plays with B6, um, which of course is a uh, with G3. I'm sorry, uh, which is a very reasonable way to play. I'll play this line with uh, Bishop F5, Queen D7, which became popular at some point recently. It's actually quite a. I think it's quite a reasonable setup for Black. Um, try to trade this bishop. And that really kind of takes the sting out of White's uh, position. Um, I think so again, there's different. There's a few different things you can do here, but I'll just play uh, my knight to h6 and f5, which is one of the plans. There's a few. There's a few ways to play this, of course. So I'll play knight f5. Um, when he plays b4, I'll play b6. All right. So he goes here. Uh, I think this is fine to come to to hop on to d4 here. If he takes now, do I want to take with the knight or with the pawn? I think I'll take with the pawn. Just it feels like that's a little bit more interesting. Um, the other position is really um, is really just boring. So this looks more interesting. All right, I'll play e6. So his knight finds a good square, but at some point I should be able to kick it out. Uh, if I want to, and I'm I'm hoping that I can get some kind of something going, maybe on the on the on the king side. Um, I think I'll start with d5. <clears throat> I have to make sure I don't get myself forked on uh, on e7. That would be an unfortunate uh, turn of events. I'll take on c4. Okay, so now. I like playing e5, I think, with the idea of ultimately uh, playing something like, you know, rook to e8, maybe, uh, and e4. I'm, I'm trying to get some kind of attack. Maybe maybe this plan of attacking is not right. It's possible that I should just play more solidly. I also have this idea, well, ooh. So now f3 is actually a big mistake. And after knight e3, he's got a big... Uh, we call this the family, uh, the family fork, right? Um, his position was okay. He had played a good game. My plan was to maybe play h5, h4, and I don't know. I, th I thought that that was a reasonable position for me, but of course, still a still a, co a total game to play. Um, so now, just for uh, for a minute, um, I will play the introduction to uh, the Magnus uh, video series on the Stonewall that just came out today as sort of a a, a birthday gift to our premium members. And so, yeah, I will play that for you right now, and then I'll be right back playing, uh, playing more games. Hello, everybody. I thought uh, in this video series I'd talk a bit about the, the Stonewall. Uh, in particular, the structure not necessarily coming from one F5. Because um, I... I'm not sure that I'm the biggest theoretical expert, but I can talk a bit about my games and my experiences um, with, uh, with the line. Um, I first got introduced to the Stonewall by Sim Stein, who was uh, my coach at some point. He himself played a bunch of good games against, uh, against very strong players in the Stonewall. Uh, in his youth and has kept it as part of his repo repertoire all, all his life. I think he himself was taught by international master Helmers when he was, uh, was young, so it's certainly been in Norwegian chess circles for, for uh, many years uh, before that. Um, it was a uh, favorite of, um, of Botvinnik. Uh, you can see from, uh, from uh, his style that he really liked this particular structure or the famous Botvinnik system with e4, um, d3, and c4 as uh, as white. Uh, again, the point being that you take up a lot of space. You create one hole, uh, d4 or or e5, but um, you think you can sort of uh, uh, play around it. Um, and uh, well, first of all, I'll talk about the best way of getting getting the stone wall because I can see from my own games that I've gotten it in uh, in a bunch of different ways. Uh, first of all, the best way after 1d4 is to go knight f6. And c4, you go e6. 
and uh, you hope that your opponent plays g3 because then you can go d5, bishop g2, bishop b4 check, bishop d2, bishop b7, knight f3, um, castles, castles, I don't know, c6 or knight bd7, whatever. And then you hope that your opponent will make some moves like queen c2, queen b3, a4, and so on, because then you're going to get knight e4, f5, and you're going to get basically the best version of the stonewall you can possibly get. So people will still play it with white, though, with, not without uh, success. People like, uh, like Ding have played it a bunch with white. Karyakin have had these improved stonewall structures um, uh, a bit uh, as, as black. Um, uh, several times, uh, but it's yeah, it's it's a, it's a more or less balanced uh, battle there. But I think neither white players nor black players mind it too much. So um, I understand that's a bit of a jokeler note, but uh, seriously, it's it's something you should uh, think about uh, when building an opening repertoire um, or just trying out new openings that. A lot of the same structures can arrive from completely different move orders and even completely um, uh, different uh, different openings. Um, I guess one of the most famous uh, examples is uh, is uh, the Panov structure that can arise from either the, well Panov Karukan or uh, the Nims Indian to completely. Um, different openings. All right, guys, I am back. And so here we go. I am going to play more people now. By the way, Magnus uh, himself was playing some games today uh, on Chess24. His handle is uh, Magzi Bugs. I think I'm spelling it right. I put it in the chat now just for if anyone uh, if anyone uh, didn't know it. But he was playing here today. He challenged uh, one of the one of his teammates, someone he's worked with in the past, Laurent Fresinet, and um, and I believe uh, destroyed him actually. But it was uh, you know he is a he is a very very strong player, so there's no shame in that. Uh, but yeah, no. Anyway, he's a he's very good at explaining how. How he thinks, and by the way, I, I'm curious to hear. You know, we've had a lot of uh, different. Um, we've had a lot of different people today. Um, I'm playing h3 because if I move my bishop, he takes on c4. Um, I take back. I'm losing a tempo, so I'm just kind of trying to wait one move, uh, and I may even play a3. You know, I think those are useful. And if he takes on c4, bishop c4, then at least my uh, my bishop is not wasted a tempo while I've made hopefully some somewhat useful moves. And uh, yeah, so all right. So he plays he plays b6. B6 makes it a little more tempting to take on d5 um, because it does you know weaken a few things. But I think I'll just play rook c1. It's sort of a sort of a bit of a waiting game. I guess now finally I may I may ultimately have to <laughs> move my bishop or or take on d5. But I don't I don't love taking on d5. It's a little dull. So I'll just play bishop b2. Um, I think white's a little better. Black Black's position is a little bit on the passive side here. Um, he can try to play c5 at various points, but it looks well. Actually, it's probably not. It's probably not terrible right here. I may be able to play d takes. Um, I have various sort of combinations of trying to win a pawn there that might be a little bit annoying for him. Um, all right, so he takes on c4, I'll take back. Now, if he plays c5, I'm very happy to play d5. That's a good, it's a good structure because he doesn't really have any good way then to stop me from playing e4, rook e1. Position is just quite passive. Um, and this is also fairly passive, although, you know, he may have... So he wants to play... Um, he wants to play c5, but this move is a little bit slow. So I, I'm assuming i, I got to play um, e4 threatening e5. Uh, he can try to play h6, uh, but if he plays, you know, if he plays h6 and then 
has to play g5. I see that as a pretty significant concession. I'll just play bishop g3. Um, not not going to be bothered by sacrifices here. And but then I think these weaknesses are going to be pretty uh, pretty real. Uh, pretty real. So now d5. Um, interesting. I mean, I can play. I can play. I'll probably just play d5. It seems like the simplest. Uh, since I have control of the e5 square right now, I think that's the uh, that's the most natural way. And it, if he takes, then I have a bit of a decision of which piece to take with. Um, but I think the pawn is good. I mean, I'll just keep pieces on the board here because I think his king might be a little bit weak. Um, he can try knight h5, probably a good move. All right, so I think I'll just play bishop h2 because I, I don't see how bishop d6 for key 8 my bishop is just in the way of things here. Now he plays knight e5, which is a, un, an unfortunate blunder. Um, that was part of my idea, was that it's cut. Uh, someone is asking whether Ali Reza is, um, is going to get money from the sales of hoodies, or, or is he looking to sue? Well, this is a, a funny question. Um, I, I can actually tell you that I think Ali Reza wants to get a shirt from us, so I don't think, I don't think he's upset. And that you have to keep in mind that this is actually publicity for him, right? Like we're we're publicizing his name, but in any case, we're always we're trying to do good things for chess players. Everyone who's playing banter blitzes is getting paid, um, so those are not bad things. And just keep that in mind. All right, we're going to play Chess Oshrasi here. Not someone that I've seen here before, but he's a premium member, uh, highly rated one. All right, I'm going to play. I'll play D4 in this game. Thank you for the game, uh, Termopfer. All right, let's see what our friend will play here. <clears throat> Sorry, by the way, about my voice. It's been, uh, I've been getting a little bit, uh, a little bit of a cold, and I think I'm, I'm coming out of it, but, um, <clears throat> well, I'm going to give this guy another five seconds here. I was just trying to see if he was, if he was around, um, Decker, it's always hard to know when people are, are joking online. I, I um, you know, I suppose I could have guessed. Maybe Jan is better at, at figuring out online sarcasm. He's got a lot of experience. All right, I'm going to abort this one because uh, my opponent has not played yet. And let's pick somebody else here um, <clears throat> with a fairly high rating. All right, here we go. All right, c4 played. I'll play g6 again. I'm trying to keep things interesting, uh, but he plays the g3 lines. The g3 lines are like the least interesting of all of these lines, but that's okay. Well, compared to King's Indians, you know, King's Indians are just uh, a little bit more exciting. All right, so he plays this way. Um, I'll play with e5. Um, it's um, sort of a reverse uh, reverse Podvinic setup here. Uh, I think I, I kind of like these setups because usually you end up trying to attack with black. Um, doesn't mean that you get to checkmate, but at least you uh, you get to try. So f5, um, probably bishop e6. Maybe bishop e6 is a more accurate move. All right, so he he plays. Um, they move f4, which is totally normal. Knight b5, also normal. I'll play bishop f7. Um, the idea is that in some cases, if I ever want to take on d5, okay, so he plays knight c3, So, he, but it, it, I was potentially wanting to take on d5 without getting forked. Uh, so he makes this move, which is also a good move. So now he's probably um, getting ready to play b4. But actually, I still have... I'm still uh, I'm still able to kind of uh, he's not quite able to play it yet. I do have to find something uh, to do though. Rook e8. Uh, he's played well, so there's not really like I don't really have any huge attack here at all. Um, in fact, I don't have any attack at all. I have to try to not be too much worse because these positions can be can certainly get to be worse uh, for. Uh, 
So I play knight takes d5, trade one pair of knights. He's got to take with the knight to defend his b pawn. Um, then I think I can take on f4. <clears throat> um, I'm just kind of trying to um, to get some counterplay. Um, he can take in a few different ways, uh, which is always good. You know, you want to give your opponent some options, ways to go wrong. Uh, it's interesting if he takes on f4 with the g pawn. I may consider taking on d5, and then playing knight takes b4 because the pawn on um, the pawn on e3 is a little bit weak. Um, I don't know if this is the right way to play this at all, but I just I just uh, thought it would at least make it a little bit more complicated. Although it might, you know, things might just get traded uh, and there's not so much left, so we'll, we'll see. He can take on b7 first. Um, then I can play either, I mean, rook b8 looks pretty natural. And sometimes the d3 pawn hangs in the, in the, in the back. Uh, it's also interesting to maybe keep the, um, <clears throat> keep the rook on the a file so it can go to a2, but I'm just, I'm just going to make a decision and play a play this way. Um, he can take on b4, then pawn takes b4, and then on the next move I'll take on e3, and I kind of like that, I kind of like that position just because it seems like my king is safer. We have opposite colored bishops, um, and I, so now I'm going to get to take on e3 because he's, he's got to move his bishop. So either he takes on b4 or he does something, but no matter what he does, I, I can take on e3. And then my queen has a very nice um, landing square on h4, in some cases, so I, 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 I'm definitely more happy about my position now than I was like five or ten moves ago because, um, yeah, this seems this seems like I'm actually, you know, I could be quite a bit better in this position. If rookie one, I have simple move queen e7, uh, threatens to take on e1, and then if he takes, I can take and take on f4. All right, so he plays queen to b3. Now the thing is that his um, He's starting to be really far from his king, um, so I am I am tempted. So, but what's the what's the right way to take advantage here? I'm thinking of starting with bishop d4. It's also possible to start with queen h4. Um, kind of a tough, tough decision here. I'll, I'll play bishop d4 first. I don't want to get my king uh, in some kind of bind, and I guess I'll play queen h4. Uh, hard to decide. So he plays bishop back. That makes sense. Um, my plan was to go go rook e8. I'm gonna have to start kind of moving here, uh, and now maybe. So my king is still still safer, but it's not easy. It's not easy to really take advantage of it in this position. I mean, it's and we have a, obviously uh, very reduced material here. Ah, I, did I just hang a pawn? Yeah, I just hung a pawn. Not a great uh, way to play. Now I have to kind of fight for a draw, um, which I I'm uh, a time scramble here. I actually can try to play against his pawn if I can. Uh, Oh boy, he's fast. Oh, I managed to draw. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was tough. Um, yeah, I had a good position, but I just started running out of time. Good game, uh, good game, S C Dijonis. Um. I have had some tough games already in this, uh, in this, okay, knight c3 is challenging me, he had challenged me actually hours and hours ago, so I said I would play, and so here we go, I see his challenge, I'm going to play against him, <clears throat> I don't know if he actually plays one knight c3, I guess that would only make sense, but I'm, I'm not sure yet, so let's see, nope, he didn't play knight c3, um, Decker is asking me my thoughts on the um, hippo, yeah, Gata plays it. He actually plays it incredibly well. Um, I really, I mean, I think he makes it look easy to kind of avoid trouble. I, I mean, if he was playing 2,700 players, maybe it wouldn't be so easy. But 
he does really make it sound make it just look uh look easy and so um you know and he gets these nice attacking a lot of cases so um i don't really i don't feel like it's the you know i don't feel like it's the best opening but <clears throat> he certainly he certainly knows how to stay clear of trouble you know against everyone but the very best of opponents and uh it's actually really fun to watch because he gets these uh kind of close positions and then suddenly he's winning right i mean it's, so it's it's uh it's definitely it's definitely cool to see um i don't think my opponent here made a good pawn sacrifice um i was actually quite surprised to see it um but he sacrificed a pawn <clears throat> Uh, I'd be happy to trade some pieces now that I that I've taken a pawn. He can castle, and I would probably castle and try to. Well, he's castling the long way, which is. I thought he was going to castle short. Uh, now he's inviting me to take on c3. Um, in some cases, you know, I'd, I'd be scared because he's got two bishops, but I think here I'm just a little bit too fast. Um, so he does give me. Uh, he does play bishop uh, to d4. Let's see. <clears throat> so on uh, on queen a3 he's got to go uh, bishop b2 I guess but I think you know I think here I'm I'm taking yet another pawn okay he didn't sacrifice I thought he was gonna sacrifice another one um, he decided to go um, king b1 now I think I can just castle long and my position should be uh, should be pretty solid <clears throat> all right he goes back here I'm gonna play queen to a4 keeping an eye on the uh, c2 pawn um, <clears throat> so now how do I it's, it certainly is tempting to play um, knight to d5 I think that's what I'm gonna do I mean I'm sort of sacrificing the the g7 pawn but I was hoping that that was uh, worth worth it probably wasn't necessary to sacrifice it but I'm still uh I don't mind that because if I play pawn takes d5 after that the the c2 pawn will be a real weakness all right so he goes here now my idea was to play knight to b4 I'm threatening c2 and a2 and that's kind of that's kind of annoying uh, for him all right so now I can take I can take another pawn the pawn on a2 and I probably will I'm just trying to see if I got some other ideas here not nothing uh nothing that screams uh screams at me here I guess we'll take that pawn hmm seems like it's a it would be a travesty to trade the queens but I don't really know what else to do. He wants to take my pawn on g7 in some cases. Somehow these are the positions where I start like thinking for for way longer than I should. <laughs> uh, all right, let's just uh let's just play it safe because I I I see myself just uh thinking too much. And I'm starting to scare. I'm starting to get scared, and I'm going to run out of time. All right. So now I get to trade queens. I'm going to trade rooks. I guess I'll give him a check first. Then I'll take the bishop, and he's going to he's going to attack. He's attacking my pawn, so he's going to win a pawn back here. Um, but but I still have. Uh, I'm still up two pawns, so that should be uh, should be enough to win. All right, I think I'll play. Should I play? Still got to make the right moves, you know, in these positions to make sure you don't get into a worse version. All right, so now I I like this weird plan of actually that's kind of that's kind of silly. He could have tried to play um, rook f4 there. I'm I'm really playing this game sort of sloppily, uh, but now I should be should be fine in this rook end game. Gonna win a third pawn. So, um, yeah, I've managed to survive. Survived the uh, onslaught here. 
got in a rook end game that I should be able to win uh, comfortably, of course. We'll start pushing these uh, pawns. I have a nice uh, check at my disposal here, and I don't want to take this pawn and break my uh, break my structure. Uh, he can go well. I suppose he can go after my uh, my h pawn because it's going to be it's going to be far too slow, and it's just one pawn, so you can always go rook h2 if need be. But here I'm just a little too fast. I'm I'm going to be able to queen before he's able to uh, before he's able to get counterplay. And this is mate. So good game, knight c3. All right, who is next? Um, all right, we'll play Chess Beauty because that's a that's a great name, Chess Beauty, 2300 WFM. So a titled player. All right, looks like I have the white pieces. I will play e4. Who is Chess Beauty? I'm not sure. From India. Sometimes some of these title players, uh, their name is displayed, and sometimes it's not. Uh, I'll play knight d2. Quiet line. More quiet, I should say. On bishop e7, I'll play knight f3. Um, many ways to play the French, of course. Um, Alex Lenderman, who was just uh, who was just uh, doing a banter blitz before me, is a very good uh, French defense player. And I'm playing bishop d3 here, which is sort of a less theoretical line. The main theory is with e5, and there's all these pawn sacrifice lines, but they get very complicated, and um, it's getting it's getting to be a long day for me. I've been uh, hosting all the streams since uh, since three o'clock today, and uh, I was up really early for some reason, so uh, it's been a long day. Hello, Kilimanjaro. All right, pawn takes d4. So now we get, uh, after pawn takes d4, we get these sort of standard uh, isolated queen pawn positions um, that are um, considered to be considered to be playable for about both sides. I think it's a little bit easier. I don't actually love taking on e4. I know you want to trade pieces because you know you're playing against an isol isolated pawn. Uh, but this one is just a little bit, it's just a little bit uh, passive, and so my, my play is going to be a little bit easier here. Uh, but of course it's, it's, you know, entirely, entirely playable. All right, so now I'll probably start with queen d3. At some point that will force uh, g6. Uh, normal to play a3 in these positions, but since her knight is not on d5 yet, I figured I can just wait until it gets there. Um, and obviously now knight d5 would be a mistake. And now I guess I'll play bishop to g5, forcing uh, forcing g6. That also seems to be sensible. Okay, and then I guess I'll play knight e5. All of this seems fairly re fairly normal. I don't know. Yeah, I think she's played. She's played uh, fine. You know, she's played very solidly so far. Um, so bishop b7. I think I'll play. So th she has the idea to play maybe uh, queen d5 if I'm a little careless. So I think I'll play bishop b3 to start. Um, I think that's a reasonable move. Now the question is, what do I do if she plays bishop to d5? <clears throat> um, and I'm going to have to think about it. So let's see. I think I'm going to play either rook e1 or rook d1. Maybe even rook c1. Because I don't think she's actually really threatening anything. So if bishop takes b3, I think I, I can just play knight to c6. And that's going to be an annoying position. It's a pretty nasty pin after I take on e7. Um, so, yeah, so okay, she's letting me do it. I think this is annoying. I mean, we'll see. If I miss something, then I miss something. 
Um, but I think this is an annoying pin because, you know, the, um, the knight is going to find it really hard to get out of that pin. Um, so I was happy with this move. Um, so, all right, so now I take on e7, takes. Now should I take, I might take, I, I guess I take with the queen to keep the pawns. Uh, either move was possible. And now, okay, so this move, now the move d5 is, is very tempting here. And I think that's what I'm going to play. Although I have to be a little careful that um, so now she'd like to move the queen. <clears throat> yeah, I gotta play d5. On h6, I can actually just play um, simply bishop h4. If nothing else, I mean, it, you know, and g5, bishop g3, because there's never any knight takes d5 because of uh, queen takes d5 with the, the queen uh, hanging in the back there. So I think this is a pretty unpleasant position. Um, all right, so e5, reasonable reasonable move. Now, I'm tempted to play simply rook c1, but it's, it's tricky. So f4, F4. The problem is there's always a queen c5 check, so I, I don't I don't want to play f4. So I'm going to play rook c1 first. Um, now my idea in a lot of cases is to play rook c6. I'm not sure. You know I don't I don't actually know how much better I am here. I thought this was going to be, you know, kind of a big deal, but now that I'm playing it, you know, I'm not finding it that trivial to continue. So maybe it's not, you know, all that special for me. I still like this position though because now I have a passed pawn and the king the king doesn't look incredibly safe uh, and it seems like in the very worst of cases I'll be able to just kind of trade pieces down and, and not be never be worse but so knight d7 was the move I expected here um, and then I can either play rook c7 okay so she makes this move that is not that is not what I thought, but I, you know, of course, she's got some ideas with uh, back rank uh, threats here. Um, although I don't know. I don't know how great it is. Um, I probably want to keep the rooks or play rook c6. I think I'll play rook c6 because um, the rook c6, rook c6, if she takes and I play pawn takes, that takes away the d7 square from the knight. Um, in which case, she has to play knight d7. And my goal first was to play um, rook c6. So on knight d7 now, I think I have interesting moves like just queen c3, threatening the rook on c8 and putting pressure against the pawn on e5. Um, this still looks pretty unpleasant to me for her. So she takes, I take, um, and now I don't know how she defends the pawn on e5. Um, maybe she doesn't. She does this. Um, so now, now I can get my pin again uh, in a way that probably is kind of irritating. But do I have anything that's better than that? Maybe not. I think I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go for that. And now I, I think I just got to make. I can't stand to have my back rank, uh, my back rank uh, forever, forever threatened. So I'm, I'm just going to make this move, and then you know we'll see. I think this position is uh, is not easy. The king, the relative king safety and bishop against knight. But she's played a she's played a good game. This has been a this has not been an easy game. All right. So this move, I'm sort of happy to see. I think now. Um, the simplest is probably, I'm going to play queen g3, I'm threatening the pawn on g4, and on, on h5 I can play queen f4, and now this is probably really bad, I mean the queen is coming to g5, so that sh should be pretty much over, I think. So she goes queen c2, which um, then I would have taken on f6. So, good game, chess beauty, tough, tough, uh, tough position. 
Um, all right, let's see what else we got here. I've got a lot of channel. Oh, the magnet just challenged me. All right, well, I'm going to play the magnet one game. We have not played in a very, very long time, so here we go. I get the black pieces. Let's see. Let's see what he does. I have to. Uh, I have to play for Canada's honor here. This is a a friend of mine. He is from Canada also. So he plays knight f3. I'm going to play this uh, system again, which seems to be the the most solid line that I know right now. B4 is actually possible because uh, because the pawn hangs in the back. So he's playing this way, which I've had a very similar game already. Now I think on B5 I'll play knight D8 in this game. And the last game I, I did something different. Um, but you know, let's try something. Let's try some, something else. All right. So he's going to play for. Um, he's going to play for. Uh, For a4, a5. All right. So, what is this position? My knight on d8 is actually a pretty abysmal piece. I'm going to put it on b7 for now, and my idea might be to just play e6 and d5 somewhere. Um, so he jumps in. I'm going to play e6. Um, all right. And so now, I was considering playing d5. I don't know if it's a if it's a crazy idea or not. I'm going to try it. We'll see what happens. Um, seems doesn't seem unreasonable to me. Um, I want to give my knight on b7 some squares. So now we can it could, you know, jump up, jump up to to one of the one of the squares here. So seems okay for me here. I think I'll play all right. Well, maybe I'll play I think I'll play queen c7. Get my queen off of this file. At some point he can play for e4, but I think you know those positions look fairly okay. All right, so he goes here. Now I think, I mean, I could play d4. It's not going to be a bad position for me there. <clears throat> so if he goes back to d2, I'll just okay. So he takes. I mean, I think this position is not is not going to be a bad position for me. It's, at the worst, at the worst, it can be equal, but I think in most cases it's going to be more pleasant um, for me. Uh, you can play d4 here, I guess. D4, I can probably just play rook d8 so that he doesn't get his knight onto d4, threatening to to take on e6. So, you know, I think he's going to have a, he's going to have to try to make a draw here, and it's not going to be necessarily super trivial. If he takes on d7, I'll take with the queen. Um, and it's not, I mean, it's maybe, maybe he can make a draw, but it's not, it's not that easy, I think. All right, so he plays a5. I think I got to take this pawn. It's a, it's not a free pawn, but it's a pawn. Um, and now I'm hopeful that I can create some attack. So queen b7, if he goes, okay, so this move now, <clears throat> I'm thinking that I should probably play queen f3. I'll do that. Um, my goal is to play knight e4. Um, and, you know, his position is not, it doesn't seem stable here. So he may, he may be okay, actually, but, you know, it's, but it's, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely on the risky side for him. Rook d3. Uh, if he plays knight a4, I may have knight b3 to d4. Actually, against a lot of moves, I may have. Uh, that seems to be really pretty strong. <clears throat> Next, I'm coming to e2 check. And now I have ideas with uh, knight takes g3. Um, Knight takes g3 looks like it's got to be right here. Uh, 
I'm threatening queen h1 mate and on pawn takes g3 I have um, rook d2 check I think that's mate now right should be mate good game uh, the magnet all right with that I get my rating back to 3100 um, I'm sure there's going to be a rematch at some point um, thank you all right now I'm going to play uh, let's see here a three minute game someone maybe a little bit less high rated theorist theorist has been active in the chat we're going to play against theorist I probably only have about one more game um, only one more game before I uh, leave the stream the, the stream I can't speak anymore before I leave the stream to uh, Lafong here I'm going to play e4 e5 as you know Jan Gustafsson has showed us everything that we need to know about this although I'm a little bit I'm always a little bit worried when I play someone named theorist because I have a feeling that they might know more theory than I do um, but we'll see okay so he plays with d3 he didn't play uh, Ah, oh, how does this go? So d3 and c3. I don't know. I guess I can also play d5 here, but I'm just gonna play. I'm just gonna play more uh, more solidly. I guess I'll play with bishop b7. I'll go knight b8. So now we have sort of a briar structure. Um, it's a little bit different because he's played um, d3 first, but it kind of leads to the same thing, uh, same type of positions. So these uh, Spanish structures are always interesting. Right, Got to take with the rook, otherwise there's some. Well, I probably could have taken with the knight also. All right, he goes here. So far, he's played. Uh, he's played well. There's nothing really. Uh, I can't say anything bad about his play at all. Another good move. He's threatening the. Uh, he's threatening the pawn on b5. Uh, I think I gotta play c6. Again, this is kind of normal, but I may. I may not have played this in the very best way. Um, I'm not sure. Not in love with how I played. Um, I feel like white is a little bit better. But actually, it's, maybe I'm maybe I'm just okay. It's just not. I didn't get a position with lots of counter chances. All right, pawn takes b5. I guess I got to take with the pawn. I mean, it's with the a pawn. I, um, because taking with the uh, C pawn is just structurally doesn't make that much sense, uh, but it's a symmetrical position, and so it's hard to hard to create too much. All right, so he's threatening. Um, this is a standard uh, standard threat here. He is uh, threatening knight f5, and I have to be careful actually because I may um, have to make sure not to uh, not to get smoked here. Yeah, he's played uh, he's played very well in this game. Um, interesting. You know, he might be able to sacrifice a piece here if he's uh, if he's feeling if he's feeling brave. Um, sacrificing a piece is interesting. I mean, I think it just leads to a very double-edged position. It might actually be good for him. Uh, we'll see. <clears throat> So knight takes d6, he wants to take on f7, uh, he wants to take on b7, so um, so what do I do? I was thinking maybe, I think I got to play queen c7, and then when he takes on f7, I take, I mean, but he, he's probably, he's probably just much better here. I thought he should actually have traded rooks here. Um, this one is still probably good for him, but maybe... Maybe I got a lot more counter chances now. I may play knight h5. Um, I'll just play knight h5. I mean, at this point, I'm just kind of going for tricks. 
because um, he's got a lot of pawns for the for the um, the two pieces. So of course he's he should be he should be just winning. Um, that being said, it can get this is the kind of position where you can certainly get uh, a lot of tricks. Um, I'm gonna play knight c5. I'm actually I think he's kind of misplayed it, and now now he's got to be. It might be good for him, but he's got to be very careful. Now I don't know if it's good for him. I'm, I'm threatening to take on g2. Um, I'm also kind of going to open up. Um, all right, so he, now he's threatening. He did, he did find a way to create a nice threat here. He's got queen f6 uh, coming. Um, although I think I still have knight g2, queen f6, queen g7. Um, I mean, he's actually, he's maybe, just, well, now he's not winning, I guess, because uh, I've won a, an exchange back, and so I'm probably winning. Uh, I have to be a little, to make sure I don't get myself in a, some kind of silly uh, silly checkmate, but there's not too much of a threat, so I should be, uh, I should be okay here. I'll just give a few checks, and I can move my bishop. He doesn't have rook a8, thankfully. Um, so yes, yeah, so I should be... I'll play rook f7 to attack his bishop. So I survived. Tough, tough game. Um, tough game. This has been fun, guys. I've, I've, um, I may have run a little bit out of energy at the very end, but I had a great time. Uh, I had a great time playing today. I'm actually going to go back to my... Uh, let's go back to my uh, full screen here. Uh, I appreciate everybody joining me for, for this... Uh, for this birthday blitz banterthon, I've I've had a good time watching everyone. Some of the people, like I thought Kamsky was amazing. He really does a great job explaining. Spidler, of course, always has a ton of class. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, I'm gonna leave leave the scene to Lafong to uh, to wow you for the next uh, hour and a half before uh, Irina Crush comes on for I think her first uh, stream ever. Um, so that should be fun. All right, guys, thank you very much, and I will speak to you soon.